In the original timeline of Dragon Ball Z, all of the events we know from the story unfolded the same way up until after the characters returned from Namek. Goku still defeated Frieza after transforming into the legendary Super Saiyan. But nonetheless, Frieza survived their encounter and came to the Earth for revenge. After he touched down the planet with his father King Cold, it was the original Goku who arrived using instant transmission and proceeded to defeat both of them. Something I discussed in depth in this video here. Upon defeating these galactic tyrants, Goku became indisputably the most powerful mortal in the universe. There was no one alive in his reality, or at least awake if you count Beerus and Majin Buu, who could have defeated him at this point. Nonetheless, a great enemy would still claim Goku's life. This was not a fighter, but rather a virus, the Heart Virus. This led to a chain of events where the Earth was decimated by the arrival of the androids, two terrible enemies who killed all of the Z fighters except for Gohan, although that wouldn't last for long. It was up to Trunks and Bulma to find a way to defeat them, which they eventually did. But even after this, their timeline was still ravaged by the fallen god Zamasu and erased by the Omni King Zeno. However, what if Goku never got the heart virus and died? How would this affect the story? Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss that. If you like this content, you can help support LSM on Patreon, a link to which is down below in the description. Make sure to subscribe and enable all notifications, so you can stay up to date with all of my videos. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Now, assuming that Goku never got the heart virus, there would be some immediate changes to the story. The first of these would be that Goku would continue his training on Earth and grow even stronger. Now, we don't entirely know how much time passed between Goku's original death and the arrival of the androids. The manga never provides us with this information. But if we go by the history of Trunks special, it doesn't seem like it was too long after this event. So it likely happened sometime toward the end of the three-year gap, a little while before it happened in the main timeline. After all, Goku is off training in the wilderness and not near society where the virus lay likely started. And no, it didn't come from Yard Rat, there's nothing in the manga or the anime that implies that. So let's say that it happened about a year before. This would give Goku an additional year of training before the androids arrive. This is where the fight begins, as 17 and 18 begin attacking the city in order to lure out Goku and the other Z fighters, just as 19 and 20 did in the main timeline. According to History of Trunks special, the first one to arrive on the scene was Piccolo. He was the first to try, and the first to die, as the English dub narrator so unfortunately put it. This immediately made it to where the Dragon Balls were removed from the equation and could no longer wish back any of the Z fighters. However, in this case, things would be a little bit different because Goku has the ability of instant teleportation. With this ability, he would be able to instantly go to the fight once he's able to lock onto an energy source. Unfortunately, because the androids have no key and cannot be sensed by Goku, he wouldn't be able to go directly to them and would have to wait for Piccolo to begin fighting. Now, considering in the original timeline Piccolo never trained with Goku, he'd be far less powerful here. As a result, I think it's likely that they would still kill him. However, Goku would arrive at this point and encounter the androids. This is where the true fight would begin, as Goku would transform into a Super Saiyan and get ready to fight. Now, considering how Android 17 and 18 usually fight, it's likely that the first fight would be one-on-one, -on -one, with 17 stepping up to fight Goku. 17 would be confident in his ability to win and kill his enemy, so 18 would stand aside. This would give Goku slightly better odds, but how would he fare in this fight? Well, honestly, not very well. But in order to make this assessment, we first need to take a look at some statements that we heard throughout the Cell arc so that we can establish both of their strengths. Now, in the TV special and in the manga, Gohan told Trunks that despite all of his training, he still wasn't as powerful as his father before he died. This was the same Gohan who was a Super Saiyan and had fought the androids before. And that was also right before he rushed into the fight with Android 17. In the manga version of the story, we were told that Android 17 wasn't even using half of his power against Gohan during their prior encounter. He then proceeded to kill him after he stopped holding back. Now, considering that Gohan believed that he could possibly take down 17 with him, we have to assume that this means that he was probably stronger than the amount of 17's power that was used in the prior fight. This would put Gohan somewhere around half as strong as 17 or more. Of course, in the anime version, Gohan fights off both the androids temporarily with just one arm, but the anime version also really overhyped his character 
just for the sake of drama in a cool fight. After this, Future Trunks was also defeated time and time again by the androids. And remember, this was the same Future Trunks who easily defeated Frieza and King Gold. However, he was also weaker than Goku when he arrived back from Planet Yardrat, which he demonstrated by deflecting all of Trunks' attacks with just one finger. Although, to give him credit, Trunks was stayed to be holding back. Now, it's an easy guess that Goku got stronger after this point because he no doubt began training soon after his return. However, because he and the other Earthlings were unaware of the threat to come, none of them would have trained anywhere near as intensely. Goku is already significantly more powerful than everyone else he knew at the time, so the motivation to push himself past his limits wasn't nearly as prevalent. So I would place Goku after the three years of training at a level still below Android 17 and 18. We know that their future counterparts are weaker than the main timeline version, likely due to the butterfly effect. But even still, they must have been far enough above Trunks where Goku's power wouldn't have been able to defeat them. Even after sensing Goku's power, Trunks still didn't think he was strong enough to defeat the androids that he knew. So the outcome here wouldn't be favorable for him. Despite that, he might have been able to hold off Android 17 long enough for the other Z fighters to arrive. We know by this point that Vegeta was also a Super Saiyan, which was shown in the History of Trunks special. But despite having surpassed Goku in the main timeline, his original counterpart was still easily killed. So even with the two Super Saiyans and the other Z fighters together, I don't think they would have been able to win. As a result, I could still see a number of them not making it out of this fight alive. However, there is still a chance that Goku could survive this encounter, because again, he does have the instant transmission. So if Goku is getting beaten down so badly that he's about to be killed, it would only make sense for him to teleport away. He would also likely take any surviving warriors with him. Although the number would have to be small, because I can't exactly see him taking 10 different trips back and forth here. This is where Goku and the survivors would recuperate and have to come up with a game plan. I think that this would unfold very similarly to how it did in the main timeline, where Goku gathers the families and brings everyone to Kami's lookout. Unfortunately, with Piccolo dead, Kami would be gone as well, and there would be no Guardian there. However, there would still be the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. And just like in the main story, I think this would be Goku's first resort after seeing the power of the androids. Just as he realized in the main timeline, Goku would need to surpass the Super Saiyan wall in order to defeat his enemies. The best place for him to do this would be in the Time Chamber, due to its intense atmosphere and the fact that he could get one year's worth of training in a single day. Something which proves very helpful when two murderous planet-busting cyborgs are searching for him. Now, as for who Goku would enter the chamber with, when it comes to suitable combatants, there's a couple different choices. For instance, it's possible that Vegeta would survive the encounter if Goku helped to teleport him away. But that's a big if, because I suspect the first person Goku would save would be Gohan. After all, he is his son, and as we know, Gohan survived the original encounter anyway. The exact means of how are unknown, but in the special chapter that Toyotaro wrote for the Dragon Ball Super manga, we see that he was off with Bulma trying to gather the Dragon Balls when Piccolo was killed. So it's entirely possible that all three of the Saiyans survived. Vegeta would also be the most comparable in power to Goku, perhaps even stronger. But despite that, I suspect that Goku would still want to train with Gohan. Because just as in the original story, Goku would have known about Gohan's incredible hidden power and potential. And if Goku died, he would want someone else to be able to defend the world in his place. Additionally, it was Vegeta's goal at this point to kill Goku. So I don't think that Goku would want to train with him and enable his own murder. He's not that stupid. Well, except maybe in Super. Now, analyzing the situation, the biggest obstacle that would pose a problem here is Gohan's power level at the time. Not only was he unable to go Super Saiyan, but he likely didn't train for the three years as he did in the main story. As a result, he would be even weaker in this scenario and would hold Goku back even more. But as I explained in my video here, this would only be at first. Because with Gohan's incredible hidden potential, which would remain the same, he would quickly scale up to his father and push both fighters to rise far beyond the level of power that Goku would have achieved on his own. Furthermore, unlike in the main story, the two of them would have experienced their friends being killed around them in the fight with the androids, which would give them just as much, if not more, motivation than the story Future Trunks told them. After all, there's a huge difference between experiencing something firsthand and just hearing about it from someone's account. So that direct trauma would likely cause them to push themselves even further than they did in the main timeline. 
During their training, I suspect that Goku would figure out the other Super Saiyan grades, and their weaknesses, before settling on the concept of mastering the normal Super Saiyan form. Then at the end of the full year, which they would likely stay for because of the strength disparity, he and Gohan would exit the chamber with their full power Super Saiyan forms, like in the original story. Of course, without those three additional years of training, the two of them would probably be weaker. However, they would still be far more than powerful enough to defeat the teenage Terminators. The story would then play out with the father and son Super Saiyan team showing up at the site of the androids next attack. It's possible that Goku would fight both of them himself, killing them one by one like Trunks did when he returned to his timeline. But I suspect that Gohan would also want to fight in this case, in order to get revenge for the death of his mentor and friend Piccolo. No, not his father. Although I'm sure that some of you were getting ready to comment that. So I can see the fight playing out as a Texas Tornado tag team match players, with Goku battling 17 and Gohan facing 18, as their fight would take them throughout a ruined city. It would quickly become apparent to the villainous duo that the Saiyans had far surpassed their power, and after showing off their incredible gains, they would dominate their opponents and finally destroy them with a father-son Kamehameha. Toriyama does love his time echoes, after all. With the world once again at peace, I think that Goku would turn his attention to bring back the other Z fighters, by going to King Kai and getting directions to New Namek. Now, we don't exactly know when the Namekian Dragon Balls were upgraded to where they could bring back a group of people at once, but regardless, Goku would find a way to wish back all those who were killed. No doubt beginning with Piccolo. And because in this version of the story, Piccolo never merged with his other half, Kami would remain the Guardian, and the Dragon Balls would likely never be upgraded. So with all that being done and Goku still alive, what happens next? Well, this leads into the threats to come, specifically Bobby and Deborah. Now, when exactly they would arrive is up in the air. In the main timeline, they arrived seven years after the battle with Cell. But in the future Trunks timeline, they arrived over 15 years later. But for the purposes of this video, let's just say that they would have come at the same time that they did originally. Well, that gives us seven years of time in between. During that time, I suspect that Vegeta would use all of the tools at his disposal to catch up to Goku and Gohan's power, perhaps using the time chamber himself. With Goku still being alive, the two of them would likely have some kind of encounter during the time skip, a fight which Goku would probably win. So by the time that Bobby arrives here, it's unlikely that Vegeta would still have the urge to turn evil evil in order to fight him. Much of that choice also came out of desperation because Vegeta knew that Goku would return to heaven at the end of the day. As for Gohan, it's unknown whether or not he would continue training, but going by the Buu Saga, it's doubtful, and without his fight against Cell, he would have never unlocked Super Saiyan 2. As a result, by the time that Bobbidi and Deborah arrive, it would be a far more difficult situation to overcome. The lack of training would add up here, as well as the fact that Goku was still alive during the seven years, rather than training under King Kai with a less limited spiritual body. So Deborah's power would pose a significant challenge. With that said, I wouldn't put it past Goku and perhaps Vegeta to have unlocked Super Saiyan 2 during the time skip. So even if one of them couldn't win on their own against Deborah, I think that if the Saiyans teamed up, they would have been able to overcome him. So combined with the lack of Majin Vegeta, Buu would have never been revived. As a result, the Earth and its people wouldn't have been destroyed, and Fat Buu wouldn't become a Z fighter. That leads into Dragon Ball Super. Beerus would wake up and seek out the Super Saiyan God. At this point, he would fight Goku, who would lose. Then he would go to the Earth to speak with Vegeta and enjoy the food there. Without Majin Buu, there likely wouldn't be anyone to anger him enough to fight. But despite this, Goku seemed intent on becoming a Super Saiyan God. And I'm really doubtful that Beerus would just give up so easily. Even if he did and he returned back to his world, the Oracle Fish would just say that he was right, and as a result, Beerus would come right back. So, going by the movie storyline, they would use the Dragon Balls, figure out the God Ritual, and Goku would become a Super Saiyan God. The lack in strength here wouldn't make much of a difference, since Beerus held back massively and Goku would still lose either way. After this, he and Vegeta would form a relationship with Beerus and Whis, and train with them. I suspect that any real difference in power between these versions and the main timeline counterparts would be Hakai'd here, because Whis would train them to manipulate God Key, and their powers would 
rise to be probably around the same level that they were in Resurrection F. This is when Frieza would train for four months and gain a massive boost in power, breaking the power scale once again alongside the badass Togoma, whose power would be stolen by Ginyu for pointless nostalgia. Now in the Super version of the story, Golden Frieza was more powerful than Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and was attempting to drag out the fight to torture him for revenge. This caused Frieza's power to lower until Goku overcame him. All before Toriyama wrote one of the worst scenes in the franchise and had him being taken out by a common ray gun. <sighs> then Vegeta would beat down Frieza, only to be killed so that Goku could win. Double sigh. Next, we witnessed the Tournament of Destroyers, which again would probably play out mostly the same way. However, this is when we would encounter a major difference with the Goku Black Arc, or lack thereof. Because without Trunks' time traveling and creating alternate timelines, Zamasu would never have that true incentive to execute his Zero Mortals plan. He would never encounter Goku or steal his body, and he would also never come to Universe 7 looking for a fight. In turn, Goku would never punch him into being evil, or in the manga version, Zamasu wouldn't get the idea to check out GodTube for information on Goku. Honestly, the lasting effects of this arc were minimal anyway, with the only real differences being that the characters grew stronger, and there are now two Zenos. This leads into the Tournament of Power, where Goku would use the Zeno button to visit the Omni King and inquire about the tournament. After some deliberation, Zeno would tell Goku about the tournament and the stipulation, leading to Goku recruiting fighters for the upcoming battle. Now this is where the changes to the prior arcs would have started to add up, because nearly the entire cast would be weaker. Goku and Vegeta wouldn't have gotten any Zenkais or trained as intensely during the Goku Black arc, Piccolo would have never merged with Kami or likely entered the Time Chamber, and Gohan wouldn't have achieved Ultimate in the Buu Saga. Although there is still a chance that he trained under Piccolo after Resurrection F, when he wasn't able to protect his friends and family. And with his plot power potential, which would always be growing, he might not be as far behind as you'd expect. Another problem is that Android 17 and 18 wouldn't be able to fight alongside them on the team. Unless, of course, they brought them back for the fight. This would probably lead to them picking a couple of other different fighters for the team. And this is when Yamcha would finally get his chance to shine. As a result, the ranking of the team going into the fight would be different, with Golden Frieza probably being the strongest after his training in Hell. Although Goku could still probably edge him out with the Kaioken, especially if he can use times 20 here. So with this being the case, Universe 7 would have an even harder time in the Tournament of Power, with most of the team being at a greater disadvantage against the other universes. But honestly, because the power scaling was just so awful at the stage and everyone was holding back anyway, I doubt that much would really be that different. Goku and Vegeta would keep growing in power the whole time, Vegeta would get his Super Saiyan Blue evolution form, Jiren would pointlessly hold back instead of eliminating everyone in a microsecond by going full power, and Goku would use Ultra Instinct over and over and over again until eventually Universe 7 wins through the power of friendship is magic. And even without Android 17, I'm guessing that Goku or whoever is the winner at the end would probably make the same wish to bring back the other universes. Even if Frieza was the one to win, because after all, knowing how ambitiously evil he is, he'd probably want to rule over the multiverse, and it's kind of hard to do that when all of it's gone. After that, our characters would get into a fight with Roid Rage Broccoli, and then the GOAT villain of the series, and things would likely play out roughly the same way. After the ten years pass, Goku would fly off to train with Oob, and into a bright new future. The only remaining threat that we know of would be the original Timeline Cell, who would still exist at this point and would actually be born a few years later. But considering that even Krillin and Roshi would be able to stomp Imperfect Cell at this point in the story, I doubt that he'd be much of a threat. And without a time machine, he'd be vaporized just as soon as he's discovered. It ain't easy being green. So this has been What If Goku Never Got the Heart Virus. Overall, there would be some big differences, but much of it would also stay the same. Unlike many other what-if scenarios, I don't think this would have some kind of horrible doomsday outcome. With Goku alive, our heroes would survive and thrive. And there wouldn't be any alternate timelines or the Goku Black arc. But the ending of that was garbage anyway, so I'm glad it got wiped out of existence. And I also did my best to fix it over in this video you can see here. But with all of this being said, make sure to let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and make sure to stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future.
Ja, and you better subscribe.